Just make it the cry of your heart. Welcome to yet another episode on the JesusGirl.ent 
podcast. <laughs> My name is Shaniqua Robinson, and I'll be your host. And so for this morning, this evening, this afternoon, this night, whatever time it is, wherever you are, I want to first say thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Listen to those Pod Bay, Pod Bean, Reason.fm, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Thank you so much for allowing us to stream on your platform. For those of you who send donations, any form of support, prayers, and any contribution to the work, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so grateful for the love. And so for this Soulful Soul Care Sunday, we're going to be talking from the topic of the big comeback. Firstly, I want to get a shout out to Clarissa Shields. Congratulations on your three-time undisputed uh, championship record now. Oh my gosh. I mean, this woman is phenomenal. She has done some amazing things for women's boxing. She's done some amazing things for America in general. She went to the UK, the United Kingdom, and she defeated um, Savannah Marshall in that awesome um, boxing match on yesterday. It was amazing. Um, Savannah was very, very tough. However, Clarissa was just the better, uh, more skilled um, boxer that gave her the advantage and her heart. And so um, the reason I'm giving her a shout out, first of all, I love boxing. That's one of my, that's my sport of choice, my uh, sport of preference. Um, I really enjoy watching the, um, the sport of boxing. In addition to that, there was some background on this fight that's kind of going to help me navigate through this Soulful Soul Care Sunday. And the reason that it's called the big comeback. So many of you who have followed the history of the two boxers, they did um, compete against each other and the amateurs. And according to the records, not according to reality, but according to the scorecard, Savannah Marshall was the only boxer to ever defeat um, Clarissa Shields in her boxing career. And so this is what they used as leverage when Savannah turned, you know, um, began her pro career and was going forth that she was the one who defeated the quote that defeated um, Clarissa Shields. And so they used that for advertisement. They used that for promotion. Savannah used it to her advantage. She was kind of like um, talking a lot of different, saying a lot of different things in um, interviews um, uh, towards Clarissa because if, according to the record, she beat her before, a lot of people began to be- believe that she could beat her again. Now, it wasn't until most recently that people actually looked at the fight and from many, including my own standpoint, it was not a fair win uh, um, in the amateurs either. But we're talking from the topic of the big comeback. It doesn't matter what happened in your past. It does not matter what took place in your teenage years, your early 20s, early 30s. It doesn't matter what took place any anywhere before for your relationship and coming into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Once you come into a relationship with him, that changes the game for everything. So even I'm using this as an illustration to kind of balance out the two, the natural and the spiritual, that even though she may have defeated her in the amateurs, even though she didn't, but I'm just saying according to the scorecards, that didn't mean that she was going to do the same thing to her in the pros. And so I want to reach you all today with this message to encourage you. You may not have been successful for one thing in your past. You may have been uh, palmated or defeated or maybe you even was cheated out of some things previously in your youth or previously in your um, early adulthood. And now because of those defeats, you're nervous about going forth. So you may have fear about trying those things again. But I want to encourage you, encourage you with the word from the Lord. And I'm glad I said courage and unintentionally. I want to give you some courage to step out on faith and do it again. You're not even the same person today that you were 10 years ago. You're not the same person today that you were even last year so yes it may not have been successful in one season but the game has changed now you're older now you're wiser now you're more sharper now you're more skilled now you're more talented now you have more than you had at that time even if it's not I mean I'm not talking about from materialistic or financial stance I'm just talking about character in general you have grown and this is not this now is no longer that That little, small, timid, young girl or young guy that you were, you no longer are. You're wiser. You're an entrepreneur. You're a businessman. You're a businesswoman. You're a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are somebody's mother. You're somebody's father. You are somebody, a pillar of success that this world needs to see. And now watch this. When Clarissa Shields went forth and she won that fight, when she won that battle with all of the tenacity and she took everything, you could feel almost the the, compa- the, 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 the the passion and every single punch. And she was fighting to maintain the titles that she has and to gain 
another one as well. And she was, you can, you can feel the passion now that she's won, now that she's overcome that obstacle. So many people are rejoicing with her. Now, none of us were able to be in the ring with her while she was fighting this fight, but we're rejoicing with her because what that win represents, it represents the fact that even if your past tries to hunt you, and many of us, it happens to us, especially once you get saved. People try to bring up stuff that you did in your 20s. People try to bring up the way that you used to be when you were teens. And if they haven't, if they haven't forgotten it, that's on them. That's where you left them at. But you don't have to keep reliving that in your mind. Reintroduce yourself to the world. Make a statement as it pertains to who you are. Make a lie out of the enemy. And at one point in time, they were mocking her, saying that she couldn't be the greatest woman of all time. But she, even her opponent had to admit on the microphone, she is the greatest woman of all times. May that be the confession of your enemies in this new season. We even see this with the life of Joseph. Joseph told them that he was going to be, that he had the two dreams that God gave him. Not that he just figured out on his own. God gave him the dreams of what his position was going to be in his family. And what his brothers tried to do instead of nurturing the gift and telling Instead of encouraging him, instead of praying for him, they tried to kill him. They threw him into a pit and they thought that was the end for him. But when God spoke a word of your life, whatever it is that he spoke concerning you has to come to pass. Despite what anybody else thinks, despite how anybody else feels, it has to to come to pass. And so once he's a grown adult, once he's grown into who it is that God has called him to be, once he's been processed, once he's been heartbroken, once he's been betrayed, once he's been lied on, come on here. Once he's gone through all of the anguish of being rejected and dejected and left alone and isolated, then comes the promise. Then comes the fulfillment of the promise. That's why when a person wins something like that, it's, it's, it's a rejoicing moment. Most of the times they cry because you don't know how hard I fought for this. You don't know how long I trained for this. You don't know how mentally I had to shut myself in just with me and God to silence out the negativity of the people and the things from my past so that I can really start believing that I can actually be who it is that God said that I can be. You're getting ready to make a comeback and it's going to be big. It is going to be big. And so I encourage you right now, if you haven't already done so, to begin speaking over your life. It doesn't matter what anyone else has to say about you. The power of life and death lies in your tongue. Speak over yourself. I am successful. I am whatever it is that the enemy is trying to tell you that you're not. Speak the word of God and decree and declare it over your life. And now here's the kicker and apply it to yourself every single day. Don't just recite the word of God and become uh, uh, um, uh, uh, just become someone that re just remembers scripture, but live it out. Live it out. I am the head and not the tail. So start walking like that. Start talking like that. I'm the lender and the borrower. Start living like that. Start decreeing that. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Start taking care of your body. Watching what you consume. Cutting back on certain things at certain times. Start back exercising. Taking in your water. Taking care of yourself. This is your vessel. This is your life. And you get the opportunity to rewrite the story. You don't have to live a life of being defeated, of being, you know, whatever it is that they considered you to be. You can come out of that and make a comeback. And if your comeback is not to prove anything to your enemies, because if you're doing it just to prove somebody wrong, then that's going to be short lived anyways. But it's to prove something to you that you're greater than what you could have ever expected. And not only that, if you didn't partner with Jesus Christ, then it's a win both all the way around because he said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That God wants to use you to promote the kingdom of God. That people can be able to look at your life and see that this works. That we not just speak in words, but this is actually, it works. Uh, James, I believe in the book of James says, show me your faith without works and I'll show you my faith by my works. Don't be a lazy Christian, a lackadaisical Christian, a procrastinating Christian. Work your faith so that people can be able to look at your life and have a blueprint to success. You are a success story. One thing we love in the country of America, despite what everybody else wants to think, I'm not going to talk bad about my home. We live here. Glory be to God. One thing we love here is an underdog story. Somebody that came from the uttermost to the guttermost. I mean, came from the lowest of the lows and went to the highest heights from the lowest valley to the, the highest mountain peak. 
Doesn't matter what people had to say about you. What did God say? The game has changed. You're no longer an amateur. You're a professional. And walk like it and talk like it and decree and declare it over your life and walk into who it is that God has called for you to be. Because there is many that are on watching. There's many that are on looking, maybe looking from afar, maybe looking from a distance. And they want to see how you're going to come out of this one. So come out swinging. She didn't wait until the 10th round to start throwing power punches first round. As soon as she came out, she was throwing power punches. Come out swinging. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence taken by what? By passiveness? No. By gentleness? No. By kindness? No. Now those are all great attributes, but the violence take it by force. This thing that you fighting up against, take it by force. Take, take back your peace by force. Take back your happiness. Take back your joy by force. Take back your finances. Take back everything that the enemy tried to take away from you. Take it back by force. God is with you. And if he's with you, he's more than the world is against you. You are a success story. And you're getting ready to come make a major comeback. Now, the hashtag that I put in here is that nothing changes unless... Nothing changes unless... Nothing changes if nothing changes. So even though you want to make a good comeback, honey, I, I would love to tell you that it's going to happen by osmosis, but it's not. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to do something different. Change up your regimen. If it's working for you, keep going. If it has not been working, you got to change the regimen. Making wake, Waking up a different set of time. Changing the way that what you consume. Changing what it is to how you work out. You may need a coach. Pray and ask God, God, who are you sending to be my mentor in this season? Who am I supposed to partner with? Is it just going to be me and you? God is the great mentor that you could ever have. The greatest accountability partner. Not going to spread your business. Not going to put your stuff out in the street and judge you for where you're at. But he's able to help you to overcome every single thing. And then the thing that I love so much is right before the fight, she told her to her story, her testimony. That just added even more credence to the fact that she belongs. She deserves to be the champion. Every single obstacle she had to overcome. And once you actually win, people see people want to hear your story. Rather you win or you don't. But it's even more powerful when you come out with success that even though the enemy threw this at me and that at me and I had to overcome this and I dealt with this in my youth and da, 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 I still overcome and look at me now. Look at me now. Like, look at me now. Like, it didn't take me out. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. He's strengthening you to run this race. He's strengthening you to overcome. And it's not just going to change because you believe. You got to work it. Work at it. Work at your dream. Work at your vision. Work at your purpose. And intentionally, with intentionality, make a decision that I'm changing. I don't, I don't know about everybody else. I can't speak for everybody else. Right now, this is a ticket for one. And I'm going. And once I get there, I'll be able to help somebody else to get, you know, get out and get there where they need to be. But right now, I know that I have to have change in my life. And this change starts with me. And so I pray that you all are encouraged on today that to know that you're getting ready to make a comeback, make a partnership with Jesus Christ on today, partner with God, partner with heaven so that they can be able to so that God can be able to bring you to your next level in him. And that every that everybody that looks on, even your haters, God said, well, if you when your ways please me, I'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Undeniable victory, unanimous decision, unanimous that no, there was no doubt in anybody's mind. <laughs> There's no, there's no way we can challenge this. <laughs> there's no way. With God getting ready to, to do in your life, it will not be contestable. It cannot be contested. God did it. He going to get the glory out of your life. Go into this week knowing that you are loved by the Father, that he has the final say when it pertains to you. And if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, that all of these things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. You are a success story and you're getting ready to make a comeback and it's going to be big. Go into this week knowing that God got you and if he be for you, he's more than the world is against you. Know that we here at JesusGirl.ent, JesusGirl LLC, Jesus uh, International love you and Jesus loves you more and there's no good thing that's going to be withheld from you. Because you love God and because you all the call according to his purpose. So that's all I have for you guys. Know that I love you and Jesus loves you more.
Let's go. I don't know what you're going through, but we stopped by to tell you that what's in front of you is bigger than what's behind you. Your destiny, your promise, your future. You might as well shout before you get it, because God sent me here to tell you that what he has for you is going to be big. That it's my season. That it's my season. You ought to declare that over your own life. Say, I believe. I believe. That it's my time. That it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. <laughs> Say, breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. It's yours if you want it. Anticipate it. God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. Listen, you ought to declare this over your own life. Say it. God, he's working a miracle just for me. And it's going to be. Hey, listen, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about my future. Why? It's going to be big. Shouting into my promise. Why? 